So last week, I told you not to use printf for debugging, and you, of course, had something to say about it. And so today, I want to take this discussion just a little bit further. Welcome back, everybody. Last week's video about printf debugging definitely got you talking. Some of you agreed, some of you not so much. And so today, I thought we would dive a little bit deeper into the subject. I just want to look at some of your comments and talking about some of the nuances, printf, logging, assert statements, and when printf might not be that bad. But before we get into it, one quick announcement. So last fall, I opened up a course called Course Zero on Thinkific. It was still in development, so I made it available at half price. A lot of you have tried it out. I appreciate all the feedback feedback that you've given me. For those of you who haven't taken a look, it is a course that focuses on strategy, basically the strategy for learning how to program. My goal is to give you the tools that you are going to need in order to master computing and programming topics really quickly. And I just wanted to let you know, sometime in April, the price will go up to full price. And so if you're interested in taking advantage of the lower price, well, you've been warned, take advantage of it while it lasts. So now back to printf. So last week I told you not to use printf as a debugging tool because as a general rule, you shouldn't. But of course, everybody loves printf. It's like the first function anyone learns next to maybe main. And also a lot of you have spent years avoiding learning how to use your debugging tools. And of course, sometimes those debugging tools are not perfect. Sometimes they fall short. And so this led to a lot of discussion, which is great. And so today I wanted to discuss a few of your comments, just respond a bit in video form rather than just chatting down in the discussion section. Because I think some of them were, well, some of them were amusing, some brought up interesting points, and some maybe highlighted some common misconceptions. So let's take a look at some of those comments. So the first one I want to look at is from Juka Yuka. Um, yeah, sorry, Yuka. So I have no idea how to say your name. <laughs> sorry, Yuka. I am sometimes wrong. And I sincerely hope that you're wrong less than I am. Next, we got one here from Vladimir. He says it comes down to time, time between print and time between your debugger and Sometimes debuggers are not always faster. The interesting thing about this statement is that it's really going to depend a lot on the developer. If you haven't taken the time to become comfortable with debuggers and debugging tools, then I agree, printf is going to be faster, at least in the short run. And to be fair, I have run into a few cases where my debugger has failed me or at least slowed me down. Most of these are dealing with Heisenberg stack corruption or timing issues. And a few of these might have worked out okay with printf debugging. It's really hard to say. But I guess the big point for me is that for me, almost always the time it takes me to solve a problem with printf versus a debugger almost always comes down in favor of the debugger. So I guess my point is if you're finding yourself in a situation where printf is proving much faster than using tools, well, one, it might mean that you're dealing with a really weird problem, like one of those that I mentioned. On the other hand, it might also mean that you would benefit, that you might benefit from spending a little more time learning your debugging tools, and you might be able to flip the balance and become a little faster at debugging. Okay, our next one is from Urdu. I have no idea if I'm saying your name right, and I'm not sure how serious this comment is, but it made me smile. Yes, of course, using bad indentation for debug statements is one thing you can do. There are others, and the whole point here is to make your debug statements look more obvious, so they stick out so you don't forget to delete them. Now, one challenge with this is that some of our editors, VS Code in particular, the one that I use, can be set up to auto format your code whenever you save the code. So if someone's using this, or if, if you're using auto code formatting, which is a really great tool, you ought to try it out. But if that's something that you're using, well, this bad indentation thing is gonna, it's gonna, it's just not gonna work because the auto formatter is gonna put everything where it should be anyway. So next we have one from Kyle, and there are several like this, basically, saying that you can use fprintf and write to standard error instead because it's not buffered. Now, this is true, and it's a good point. It's a way to get around the standard out buffering issue. But keep in mind that this actually requires even more typing to debug, and we still need to remove our debug statements. And of course, next, our next comment is from Gregory. He's going to try to help us with that one. And he says, well, just wrap the printf in your own function or macro, and then you can just turn off the debug function when you want those debug statements to disappear. And yes, this will work. And in my opinion, this is way better than just sticking raw printf statements all over your code. If if you're going to do print style debugging, by all means, put some kind of wrapper around printf, some kind of debug log function so that you can turn it off all at once. This also makes it easier to find and replace if you want to actually search for that function and remove all the debug statements. Because the issue still remains that this is going to muddy your code. You've now got all these debug statements all over the place. Maybe you don't mind that. 
I do. And so it's something that I try to avoid. I try to avoid polluting my code with a whole bunch of debug statements that are gonna just stick around in there, even if I can turn them off. And this brings me to the next comment. So here we've got this one from Jesse and he's asking about what about logging? So Jesse comments that most re large real world applications, this is especially true of servers, are designed with a built-in logging system. So this is a good point. Let's talk a little bit about how logging systems and log files relate to printf style debugging. So both of these things are going to involve writing stuff typically to standard out, maybe to a file, like a log file. But folks, there is a big difference between having a well thought out, well structured logging system and haphazardly just sticking printfs throughout your code wherever just to try to figure out what's going on right now that we're trying to fix. So the point of having a logging system, and this is why servers have them, is that we're not sure what could happen at runtime. People are sending us all sorts of inputs, all sorts of requests. Some of these might be malicious. Some of these might just be really weird and we don't really know what to expect. So we sort of expect the unexpected and we want to be able to do some kind of after the fact post-mortem analysis on our software when it crashes. When something goes weird, I want to be able to look back and see what was the request that led to this weird thing and maybe I can figure out what happened. It's also a way to track down weird things like attacks on your server or weird behaviors that you didn't expect. And of course, if you do have a bug, this can help you figure out how to reproduce the bug and you might even have logging statements in there that help you figure out what happened with the bug, you know, what caused it. But I guess the biggest difference here between a temporary debug action and a well thought out logging system is that the logging system is designed to be a feature of your system. It's designed to be a permanent part of your program. It's never going to be removed. It's always there. And if it's designed well, then it's going to produce these really nice readable logs that are going to help you to figure out what's happening with your system. It's going to be part of your user interface. And if done well, these log files are going to be easy to parse and just really nice. But of course, if you start getting into momentary debugging and you start just polluting your log with whatever random statements you happen to want in order to find out what's going on in this weird seg fault situation that you're running into. Well, now you're just muddying up your log. It's going to get really ugly. It's going to get hard to read. You are muddying up your code also because you're sticking log statements just all over the place. And if you care about those really nice log files that are really easy to parse, you're probably going to want to remove all those statements anyway after you're done, after you figure out what the bug was and you fix it. Okay, next comment. So our next comment is from Marco who points out that he would rather spend time writing unit tests rather than using either of these options, printf or debuggers. And this is a really good point. In general, the better your testing system, the less time you're going to spend debugging, especially if you build your code and you're testing incrementally. So you build a piece, you test it. You build another piece, you test it. You build another piece, you test it. If you work like this and you have a really thorough testing system, your bugs are going to be easier to find, easier to fix, and you're just going to spend less time tracking them down. Also, a few of you mentioned assert statements as another way to reduce your debugging time. This is a very good point. I've talked about asserts in previous videos, but your assert statements are basically there to as sanity checks. They're there to catch cases, things that should never happen. And then if they do happen, well, you flag them and assert statements can definitely make it easier to find bugs more quickly. And usually when those bugs surface, it's a little less mind bending because you catch them earlier. Now, one last point I want to address. Some of you talked about timing issues. Now, this is one thing that's really critical is that, well, I talked about how printf modifies your code. It changes the code and you have to undo those changes. It is important to keep in mind that a debugger also changes your program. It's usually using some kind of API like P trace in order to trace the program. And this is going to add delays. It's going to change timing. So if the bug you're looking at is timing related, if it's a performance related bug, maybe a race condition or something like that, then loading things into a debugger could cause the bug to change its behavior or to go away completely. And so, as I mentioned before, this is one of those weird cases where you might have trouble with your debugging tools. You may need to explore other debugging tools, and you might even run into a case where printf actually helps you figure out a bug. Although in my experience with these high and bugs, printf can be just as problematic as the debugger. So in that case, I'm not really sure what to tell you. Heisen bugs are tricky. But anyway, I hope that helps bring some nuance to the conversation. I hope you learned something new, or at least you helped you think through this problem. And until next week, I'll see you later.